Yes, are we ready? Okay, so welcome to this uh, conversation, I guess, regarding transitioning to online instruction. Uh, David and I are here to facilitate the conversation, to answer questions, make recommendations, in order to assist in making this as smooth as possible based on our experience. Um, so uh, before we start, just uh, letting you all know that technology and learning program on campus, they do recommend Blackboard Learn as our learning management system, Kaltura as our video recording solution, and Zoom, which is what we're covering today as our video conferencing solution, which also records video. And that's why we're focusing on Zoom. Uh, our Zoom license is good for up to 300 students per meeting, so that's good. And apparently we also have a webinar license, a limited number, in case we want to do a webinar for up to 3,000 people per meeting. The first thing we need to do is to make sure that you activate your campus Zoom account by going to csuchico.zoom.us. So let me just quickly do that to show you what that would look like. So it's csuchico.zoom.us. And if you go to that link, you will get this page and you click on sign in. And if you haven't done this, you will get a portal login. And I've done it so it just logs me in and takes me straight through. So uh, the biggest thing here is your profile. So you have access to your profile. You can set your picture. And, yes? And, yes? Uh, I, I, wow. Are you recording this uh, session? Yes, this session is being recorded. And you will be sharing this recording, right? Yes, of course. Thank you. Um, the first thing that is recommended is your personal ID. You can actually change that. It's usually a nine or a 10 digit number. And campus is recommending that you change that to your office number. That way it's easy to remember. Otherwise it's a randomly generated nine or 10 digit ID. You can just do that by editing it and changing it. The other thing you can customize is your personal link because campus has a license, a corporate license for Zoom. Uh, by default, your personal link will be your user ID. Oh, my computer froze. <laughs> Is it frozen? Oh my gosh. We can still hear you and see you just fine if you want to keep talking. Oh, sorry. My, my, my browser froze. So there you go. Now it's moving. Sorry. That's why I need to upgrade this machine. So you can customize that to whatever you want, but by default, it's your username. Um, you also have access to your meetings through um, the Zoom control center. So I'm, I'm referring to this as the Zoom control center. So when you log in to csuchico.zoom.us, once you set up meetings, you have access to it under meetings. So I have a number of them set up for my classes. It determines previous meetings. And there's a, num a number of other things you can do, um, which we can answer questions about this as we move through. But for now, you need to make sure you activate your account, you set up your profile, and then after that, um, you're pretty much good to go to start using Zoom. Um, what else do we have? If you don't have Zoom on your machine, install it. It should be installed on all campus maintained computers. If you're planning to record or share your desktop from a personal, personally owned computer, you have to download Zoom from this link. And one thing and, to add to Ben. What's um, that? I'm, I'm, I'm oh, hold on. Sure. There we go. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So I'm just demonstrating that I can also do it for my phone. So there's a Zoom app, both for iPhone and Android. So you can download and use it from your phone as well. 
Yeah, the nice thing about uh, using Zoom like on a tablet, uh, Zoom has a whiteboard and sometimes it's a pain to draw on the whiteboard with a mouse. So I find it easier to draw on the whiteboard on my tablet if I'm using the tablet. But uh, other than that, the whiteboard feature on Zoom works great. Then can I ask you a question about the Zoom availability in our labs? So yes. you said it's on all campus maintained computers. So I would assume that means our classrooms that are maintained by general campus, but what about the ones that are maintained by Todd? So they are available in all our lab machines in 244 and 251. And we've tested it on also the instructor station. It works great. And I, I think David's been using it in his class. So his students use it in the yeah. lab and it's not a problem. Excellent, thank you. Other questions? Okay, so once you've activated, now we're gonna cover some use cases. I'm gonna pass it on to David to cover how you could use Zoom for office hours. Okay, um, you wanna switch it over to, can I get screen control? Oh, I think you can. How do yeah. we do that? Let's demo. <laughs> it's demo. There should be a setting somewhere about stop your screen share and then give someone else access. Where do I find that at? I feel like you just have to stop sharing and then he should be able to pick up sharing. Yeah. Okay. Um, but okay. Stop share. There you go. No, I got it. I think. Do you see mine? Yes. You do see my screen? Yep. Okay, so what I have. All right, so this is my 448 class. You can see my 448 class screen. Yep. Great. So what I did was I just uh, created a link right here within Blackboard called Virtual Office Hours. And all students need to do is click on that and then that will um, allow them to join into my Zoom session. To create that, all you do is go to Tools, go down to Zoom, and call it whatever you want. I called it Virtual Office Hours, put whatever description if you need to, and then you just hit Submit. And now at the very bottom of my class here, I've got um, my virtual, virtual Office Hours link. So when students click on that, let me delete that one. I don't want two of them in here. When students click, uh, were you gonna cover um, adding students to a room? I don't wanna I'll steal you thunder. You could go ahead and do that. Okay, actually it's your meeting, so maybe I need to join, or do you wanna demo it or just talk about it? Uh, I guess we could demo it. Okay. You're starting your office hours? Yeah. And then. I can't have two Zoom sessions. Oh, yeah. We can't. Can. <laughs> We're both in this meeting, so we can't. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, I won't be able to do that. But that's okay. So let me go back to screen share. Hey, why do you have the precedence machine? <laughs> well, that was another another thing I wanted to point out too. Is something students can do is you can um, rename yourself to whatever you want, obviously. So just keep that in mind. Um, it won't tell you for sure who the student is. <laughs> As you can, can you see what I'm doing here? Click rename. There I go. Now I'm back. All right. So that was the virtual office piece. 
Um, what you can do, and since I don't, I can't have two going at the same time, you can actually um, choose who you want to be in your um, session. So if I stop sharing, um, I don't know, it's your meeting, Ben, so maybe you can actually, no, you can't demo that because- Because I'm the host. See it, because you're the host. But, so it's impossible to demo this. <laughs> Unless someone was there live showing you, you can actually um, start up a meeting and have people request access. So if I do, let's see, where is, is Todd here? Click on Todd. Todd, I don't see you in here anymore. Brian's here, Brian Herring. Yep. 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 So I can, I think, since you're the owner, Ben, I think you can actually have him not join. Well, if we remove him from the meeting, then he's gone forever. But when first people, when people are first joining, you got kind of a window like you see up top. And there's something you can click on that actually allows, that says, allow them to join the meeting. Do you have a link to that, Ben? So maybe we could like show them the screenshot. A link to which one? To showing them how people can join a meeting and have like that waiting room and then add people from the waiting room to talk to them directly? Uh, no, I don't. But I do have this uh, screenshot of the settings where they indicate to enable the waiting room. Great. And why don't we show that? Are you seeing the document? Yeah. Right. So when you're setting up the meeting for office hours, it's probably a good idea to click on enable waiting room. That way you can see which students are waiting to see you if you're doing it one on one. Now, if you don't mind multiple students asking you questions at the same time, then don't check that box. But I find it helpful. It's as if you're in your office and they have a line waiting outside for you. If you enable waiting room, you just click and answer questions one after the other by allowing them in once you're ready to deal with the next student. Great. Questions? Talking about the um, waiting room and helping students on office hours, we also had a bullet about um, being able to take control of someone's machine. No, we don't. Oh, why don't we? You want to demo that, so why don't I, why don't you try and take control of my machine? So if you do stop sharing. Uh-huh. Then you should be able to request access to my machine. I'm actually not familiar with that feature. So why don't you take control of my machine? Okay, well, that was a new, that was a new <laughs> one. You've been in security before, I trust you. Oh, oh good. Uh, a little bit. A lot, I wouldn't do it too much, yeah. In chat, so I, since you're the meeting owner, it looks uh -huh. like I can't do that. So oh my gosh. <laughs> that's a big thumbs up right there. Oh, cause you're a co-host too. Maybe that's why. Mm-hmm. So that's now we're discovering other features in Zoom that we... Yeah, so one of, the, one of the features in Zoom, just to let everybody know, is um, we wanted to know, hey, can people actually, can I take control of my student's machine if I want to, you know, work on their code and kind of demo what they did wrong or tips and tricks like that? And yes, it's possible. So you can actually, they can give you access to their machine and you can actually take control of their mouse and everything and type right into their browser or whatever they have up. Where is that exposed? Sorry. What's that? Oh, now he's muted. I'm getting feedback. Yep. Ask a question. Oh, who's unmuted? I, I'm just trying to ask a question, so I'm not muted. Um, how do you, how do you uh, invite a student to share their screen? Yep, let me show you. Just, so David, while you're doing that, an alternative is that we can annotate something they push to us so that we don't have to control their machine, right? And you guys can demo that? Yeah. Yeah. So here, let me show you. I'm going to just cheat and show you the uh, Zoom write-up. 
So the attendee can share host by clicking share the share screen icon. Uh, there's a little video of how to do that. <laughs> yeah, if they hover to the towards the bottom of their screen, they should see the share screen logo, which is in green. Yeah, and I don't know if they if you demo this, I'm not quite sure if you can actually see it. So that one might be a hard one to demo, but at least we have a link there to show you how to do it. Did you say something, Brian? There you are. I was just saying that uh, I'm in the other room because there's a huge echo in there. So. Um, there was just a side discussion about, is there a way to take over the student's machine so yes, that that's, type into that's their what I was saying. Like that. I guess you, you could they not hear me? I was saying that it is possible to take over someone's machine. But you didn't say how. Yeah, I just had, I had a link of how to do that. I don't know if I can demo it since we're both hosts. We're both co-hosts. So we yeah. didn't see the thing pop up. There's a little video. In this video, you'll learn how to share your screen within a Zoom meeting. Simply select Share Screen at the bottom of your Zoom meeting window. From here, you'll be given various options such as sharing your full desktop or individual applications. To share your bottom of your Zoom meeting window, Share Screen at the bottom of your Zoom meeting window. From here, you'll be given various options such as sharing your full desktop or individual applications. To share your computer's sound with others, simply select Okay, that's not exactly what we wanted. We want to control. There we go. So this is, I have not done this before, so that's why we're kind of struggling a bit. <laughs> I just found this particular feature and I thought it was an interesting one. So I thought we should at least share that, hey, this exists. So you can either request remote control of another person's screen or give control, give them control to yours. Remote support session. Enabling. Okay, here we go. Using remote says. Oh, here we go. So down at the bottom, right here it says request desktop control. Request application control, request computer restart. Wow, that's crazy. And that looks like that is the place. So it looks like there's a support icon. Do you see a support icon, Ben? I don't on mine. Okay. Yeah. But maybe because I'm the host. Yeah. I don't see one either. I don't either. Yeah, and I don't use that feature when I'm working with my students. I just talk right. them through the problem. So it looks like there is some support we need to do ahead of time. So let's look here. So you need to enable remote support sessions. And click account management and account settings, click meeting tab, and then verify the remote support is enabled. So I'm guessing that right now in your account settings, we don't have remote session oh, support enabled for I this. See. Does each student have to enable that also, I wonder? Oh, looks like Todd can do it. Is Todd taking control of your computer? Just trying. <laughs> Mac isn't very happy about it, though. Somebody was trying mine, too. I just denied you. Oh, I need administrative rights to do it. Wow. OK, Todd, I'm letting you do this. 
<laughs> All right, Todd, take control. Look at that smile on his face. <laughs> So that's not me moving my mouse, by the way. Put your hands up so we can see. <laughs> Look, kids, I can control. No my hands. Mouse. I can control my mouse through my brain. <laughs> Thought alone. All right, I think that's enough of Todd playing with my brain that I'm comfortable with. All right, Todd, can you still control my machine? <laughs> He's not saying. No. Okay. All right, Ben, you want to move? Should we move on to the next topic? Or is there more questions on how to do that? So again, it looks like Todd figured it out. Todd, do you want to share your screen and show us what you clicked on? Todd, I can't hear you. Good. It's saying that uh, I can't share my screen until something is until Zoom has quit. I'd have to restart Zoom, I think. Oh, okay, but maybe you could just describe what you saw. Did you see the little support button at the bottom for some reason? Uh, there is a an options drop down at the top. At the top, okay. Under under, under options. How come I don't have any options? under options. Well, it would be so you have I think probably you have to share your screen and then the option will appear. Oh. for me I I assume. All right, yeah. Now it now I have a green bar that says I'm viewing David's eye check screen and then just to the right of that mm -hmm. is a view options drop down. Mm -hmm. And there is re request remote control. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Just a heads up, because we're halfway through now and some of us have class, would you guys mind jumping onto the things that most all of us will be using? Sure. Yep. Why don't you go next, Ben? Okay, let's see. I will stop my share. Okay. So um, the other thing you can do like um, for your discussion sessions is you can add a Zoom link for any live synchronous sessions you have. So I can demo that. So let me go to my class. So what I did in my class is I have a link to Zoom for office hours, just like David said. But this one is just a web link to my personal Zoom URL. That way, um, it's not really tied to the class because I use the same link for all my classes. Um, and then to create a link for your lectures, um, what I did was I created this Zoom virtual classroom link. So I'll, I'll go through that process as if I don't have that yet. Oh, I need to exit student preview, I guess. I can't do it as a student. So you click on this plus and you add a content area. This is the first thing you do. And we'll just call this the virtual class. And I'm not going to make it available to my students yet until I've tested it. Once that's been set, you click on it, and that takes you to this area, and that's where we add, just like David did for office hours, you add Zoom. And then I'll call this my online lecture. So you might want to separate your lecture and lab, at least that's how I did it. So for lecture, they do it one way, and the, re the only reason why I separated the lab was I want to have my lab assistants available to answer questions during the lab session. And then I don't want them messing with my lecture session. So give it a name uh, and then hit submit. And then once that's set, you click on it and you'll see all these setup coming up and you just go ahead and click join meeting. And that should fire up Zoom. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see the Zoom with, oh, I'm running Zoom. You just did this earlier, didn't you? <laughs> Can't do Zoom within Zoom. All 
Oh, did we lose him? Looks like we did. It's on you, David. All right, it's on me. All right. So one thing, the thing I wanted to show was polls. So let me share my screen again. So here within the, um, I guess the configuration screen you'd call it, if you go to meetings, you can actually create polls ahead of time. And I tried this out today and I thought it was kind of good during at least lab time. So I could kind of get a, keep a running tally to see what particular part of the lab they were on. So I had this particular one here. So I sent that out as a poll just to see how many in the class had actually finished completed question, completed questions, questions, number two, yes and no. And then near the end of the lab, I put this one out since there were six questions or six, I guess, parts to the lab they needed to complete, I wanted to see how far along they made it. So at the, near the end of the lab, I asked them what question each of the student was on. Um, I David, found that uh, useful. David, yeah. I'm completely lost what you're talking about. Like, for example, you say saying mm -hmm. this is a poll. Yeah. But do you make it in Zoom or do you yes. make it? I'm in Zoom like right board? now. I'm in Zoom right now. So in Zoom itself, I clicked on the meetings tab over here. You see that? Yes. yes. Yeah, and then, whoop, where to go? <laughs> it's gone. Oh, man. I just did what Ben did. I got out of where I was trying to be, and now I'm not here anymore. Let's see. Today, maybe today. Okay, yeah, down here at the bottom, uh, where was it? No. This is so hard for me to show since I'm not the run one managing the meeting. Darn it. All right, I don't know where it went. <laughs> but in here, there was this, oh, here it is, darn it, <laughs> poll, yay. All right, so here's where I created it. So do you see that, Elena? I went to meetings, and then I clicked on one of the meetings I was in that I have set up, and then I scroll all the way down to the bottom, and there's registration, email, branding, and poll. So what I did was I created a new poll. You can title it whatever you want. Type your first question. And then you can have answers. And then you save the poll. So now that poll is ready for me to roll out during one of my Zoom sessions. And what I was saying before is. Um, and how do you, 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 you roll out? <laughs> you to, first, you have to sit in a tunnel, and yeah, I'm sure you sound very echoey. Uh, let's see more. So since I am not the one that started this meeting, I am not able to find out where I start a poll. So usually it's up here at this top panel, unless I'm missing it. Yeah, I don't see it here. I'd probably have to start, stop this meeting and start it again. But if we did a quick add polls search, maybe we can just cheat <laughs> what Zoom says since I can't show you. So first you have to enable polling. And that's where I was in. I was in account settings. And then we did what I just did here was I created that poll, that step-by-step -step thing. And then this is what I'm missing, unfortunately, on this particular meeting, since I think either 
since I didn't start it or I didn't create the poll before it started, you have this polls at the very bottom. You see that? So there's manage participants and then polling. All I need to do is click on that polling button and then it launches this poll. And it's just like any other poll where all the students see it and they select one of their answers and then you can see how many people voted for each or, or selected each answer. And I was saying I did that today because I was in lab and obviously I can't see what they're working on. <laughs> so I wanted to just kind of find out like where are they at in the class. So that's why I created a couple polls specifically, hey, there's one, specifically to tell me what question they were working on, what problem they were working on, and also I wanted to see as a class how much progress they were making or what they were getting stuck on. So that was the poll I created. Did you just pull us on the cake? I did. Uh, <laughs> it was okay. How would you know, David? Once your polls are in, do you have the ability to show us the polls? Just out of curiosity. I've never used it, so I can't tell. What, you, what do you mean show them the poll? The results? The, re the results, yeah. Here we oh, go. I see the results right now. I'll end it, and there you go. There's the results. Oh, can you see the results or no? No, we still see David's screen. Because David's the one sharing. Okay, hold on. I'll stop. You were the one who created it. Ben, you start again. Okay. So this is what the results look like. We see your screen, but we don't see results. We see your node, node class. <laughs> it's not sharing the results of the poll to the participants. That's so weird. Well, whatever's on your screen should be shared, right? This is... It's on the screen, but it's not sharing it. There should be another button that says share with participants, I think. Share results, is that it? Uh, ah, yeah. now we see it. Oh, Very share good. results, there you go. So what I think what we're demoing too, Ben, is there should never be two people trying to demo it at the same time. Right. <laughs> Have one person start in control <laughs> because then who knows who's pushing out which poll. Right. Right. So um, I think we're getting close to the end. Why don't you pull up everything else we wanted to cover, Ben, just to make sure we cover it all. So um, for exams, uh, we've come up with a following choices because unfortunately Zoom doesn't really tie into that, but I know that's a question some faculty have. Uh, obviously you can do take home, or you can use Blackboard as an online quiz. And we have a little bit of information on Proctorio and I think David, you've spoken with TLP about this. Yeah, I did. So yeah, um, Jim Aaron's the one that's uh, the, the support contact for Proctorio. Currently um, there's several classes in the business department that are using Proctorio and they have for, I think at least the last three years. Um, what it is, is it's a way to really completely take over a student's machine, which is, I don't know, from a security standpoint, bad, but from a person who wants to make sure the student's not cheating point, really good. The idea is that it takes um, a screen, it, it controls their screen, so you actually can get a video feed of their screen it controls their camera so you can actually watch them taking the test and it controls their microphone so you can hear if anyone else is talking to them, telling them the answers of the test. So the reason why you have the video camera is that it watches your eye movement. So if you look away, after they're done taking the test, you will get a report of how long they looked away from and at what points of the test they looked away during. So that will enable you to go back and review that and see if you think they were cheating. It monitors their screen so that they don't change tabs. So they can't change tabs or change anything else within the browser. And if they attempt to, it actually records them doing that so you can see if they're looking up answers. And like I said, it also monitors their microphone to see if anyone else is there talking to them, giving them the answers. So it's designed to be a replacement of somebody standing there in the classroom watching them take the test. The way it works is it's a plug-in. They download, launch the plug-in. The plug-in is actually launched for them when they click on the test within Blackboard. 
So it's a Blackboard plugin that then is a plugin for their browser. And once it launches, like I said, it completely takes control, allowing you to watch everything the student is doing during the test. Primarily, it's there for you to, you're not like physically or actually watching them at that moment. It gives you a report at the end so you can go back and look at certain parts of the test that you find maybe they're doing something sus suspicious. Um, it is possible that we could purchase this. I talked to Tyson about it. It is $10 per student. So if, as a department, would we have Tyson like 600 students or so? It would cost us $6,000 for the yeah. semester. Oh, it's for a semester, okay. Yeah. Um, of course, minus if any of the students happen to be taking a business class right now, um, we, we don't double pay for that student. Um, what we'd need to do is we'd need to talk to Melody about this, get an MOU. If Melody approves it before we use it, we actually have to have um, a training session with Jim to go over it. I guess it's a mandatory training to show us how it works. And then we could use this for uh, any tests that we want to give that we really want to make sure the students are doing their own work. Doesn't it also assume that they have a camera? Yes. Uh, yes, of course. And an internet connection. Well, so yeah. Sue, Sue Hubbard's been using it in 301. Maybe somehow our students have been billed to business automatically. Sue's been using it in 301? Her quiz is in class just to lock down the browser. Ah, interesting. Yeah, she must be well, she's teaching in business, right? Yes. So maybe business is getting charged. I don't know. No one said anything to me. <laughs> do it. Well, Jim Aird is the one I went through training, and he set it up in those in the computer science one, and and in the um, business one. So. Well, let's keep doing that. So we just keep business to pay for it. <laughs> Any other questions about Proctorio? Should we talk about if we want to do this? Do we, is anyone interested in it for if we need to actually give finals? Well, yeah, that's the big question because it might still be online required by finals week. Can we have I no ask questions? Can, Can I ask questions? Yeah. Somebody, oh, okay. <laughs> Never let students be in the same room and do a Zoom session. <laughs> Somebody else can ask it for you. Uh, okay. But it's not as fun. Right, as, as me trying to ask it. Uh, ask it here, they can hear on my microphone. Yeah. Elena is thinking of a question. Oh yeah, it's like, is it possible for them to take tests and me block all the other websites on their computer? Yes, you lock down their their um, browsers so they can't go anywhere else. If we buy this product, which will cost us about six thousand dollars, but that's something we'll look into. I'll look into. Or if you're me, you steal it. I, Sue will teach me how to wait steal it. Do we have the ability? To, do we have the ability to require that the students have a desktop or a laptop with a camera? Mm -hmm. It's listed on um, engineering, the College of Engineering page on what's required. In the laptop? Mm -hmm. uh, that's an, I have an actual question about if they sit at home with their laptop. Can yeah. I control their laptop? If we buy this software, yes. Wow. So they and it records their eye movement. So if they move, look away from the screen, when you get their test, you'll get an alert and say, look, he looked away from his screen, look at this video. And you can watch the video of them so taking the test. To to video. You do not. Student that's that's who, why it only for tells one you. One hour for each student, uh, how how he moves the eyes. It's not effective. Or well, maybe no. their dog came in. And and yeah, and many students even when they, they take tests, they just you know look around because neck hurts or something. Well, I think that's why the faculty get to assess what the yeah. video looks like and then decide if cheating was actually happening. Right. We still don't entrust that to a machine. No, the machine doesn't just not ding them the test and say you and failed. You see yeah. Can, yeah. Can, we, can we record a session? Right. Yeah. Yeah, the whole session is recorded. Their entire 
test taking time is no no, no i mean uh, like a lecture make it harder um, what do you mean yeah we can so the lecture is recordable yes yeah, so once you set up a zoom meeting you can set it to automatically record a little button and, at the bottom that yeah. says record and then and then how do you and how do they uh how do you um disseminate yeah scroll up ben you have a whole thing on that yeah so um this document uh, there should be pdf copies on the conference room so if you choose archiving your Zoom recordings wow. on the cloud, by default, that's placed in Cultura. And actually, um, uh, all those recordings are automatically closed captioned. So that's nice. And you basically have access to them directly from Blackboard. And there's two ways to see that. Um, if you're on Blackboard, uh, if you go to My Media, over here, that takes you to your Kaltura folder, and then you see all your recordings. I've renamed this, so that's why they have a different name. But by default, they'll have a name something like this with the date and the time. So, and so we use Kaltura even for our Zoom recordings? If you choose to archive them to the cloud, yes. By default, they're sent to Kaltura. Oh, automatically they are. Yes, and they're automatically closed captioned. But how it will be accessible to students? So let me show you that. So let's say I'm in my course, and let's say I want to include a video in an announcement, just, just because it's simpler that way. Um, so I'm going to create an announcement. And when I'm in, and so this is the same as if you're creating an, an item or whatever. You click mashups and you select Kaltura Media. And when you do that, it takes you to your Kaltura folder. So these are the same files I showed you earlier. And you basically click embed. So I want that video embedded. And assuming my computer doesn't crash, it embeds it. And then once you submit this particular, because uh, it's an announcement, um, let me show you what that lo looks like, because I did send this as an announcement to my, it'll look like this mm -hmm. once it's embedded. Nice. And if you click on it, you can show them that it plays and then there's the closed caption, right? Yes. Here we go. I'm going to unmute it. I have to click, I have to click closed caption. Yeah, you can see it. Oh, it's on already. Yeah. And if students think you're talking too slowly, hit that 1x button, right? And they can get through it in half the time. There you go. My students love this feature. <laughs> and you can edit the closed captioning if it's not accurate or if there's mistakes. So, so the lectures don't necessarily need to be live. Well, I guess, no, you want to make them live to make it. You, you don't have to be live. Uh, no, but if they want to do the chat, you want to make them live. You can uh, maybe ask them to watch it. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, I guess it, it depends. I mean, if you can archive it, then people who are there see it live, and then people who aren't there can see the archive. Yeah. Let me show what I have, Ben. Can I take screen control? Sure. I can show Jaime. Sure. Okay. I'm going to go over to TLP. Okay. So, I mean, with all this, it's, okay. it's better for me at 101 than this. <laughs> but um, Jim Harris is the one to go. All right. So, what I have I'm here is each week we're supposed to pay for it. I don't know what happened. I don't know why you're not. You need to watch a video. Maybe not. Yeah, Why aren't any of the students? Oh, we're gonna have to cough up money for. Raise your hand if you're paying attention. <laughs> I'm paying attention. Yeah, yeah. We're we're hearing. So here's all my videos that I have my students watch. So like since I do David, the classroom David, thing, did you make them like uh, um, on the Zoom? Uh, yeah. Yep. Oh. I made these in Zoom. Great. Most of them, not all of them. David. Yeah. What about, what about your lecture works. videos with the text how, no, no, under how the, the videos? Works. Yeah, see, when you upload it to the Kaltura, like Ben said, right. here's my, okay. they, can, they can actually see this. This is what yeah. I want to 
show you this uh -huh. transcript. So it's not like you have to watch the subtitles. My students like to just kind of scroll through and say, oh, look, uh, he said something right here. Oh, that's cultural. And they click on it. So that way they don't have to watch the video. They can just pick the answer and write it down and be done. Yep, they could. Perfect. That would require them reading it, even the textbook too, though. Sometimes, like doesn't spell perfect. So this only happens if you choose cloud recording. <clears throat> Cloud recording yeah. only cloud Yeah, recording. because it's Kaltura that adds the captions, the closed captions. How do, you ch how do I add cloud recording? It's by default. Oh. Well, when you, you can either set it to default to always cloud record. Otherwise, um, when you set up a meeting, you get a choice between local or cloud. Local stores it on your local machine. Mm -hmm. But, uh, oh, but I they choose I cloud, right, always? Right. If you choose cloud, it goes to Kaltura and the closed captioning is added. And you have access to it on Blackboard Learn. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And can I am and not that I want to, but could you grab that video and say put it on my home web page? Yes, you can download the video after download it's been the video. saved. Okay. Yep. I think that just downloaded the text. Yeah, yeah you can download it. I just printed my transcript <laughs> to the um, copier there. Did anyone see that? Yep. That's something students can do. They want to take notes that way. And look, when they click on certain parts of the transcript, yeah. it takes them to that section In the video. of the video. Nice, nice. excellent. Yeah, it's a nice feature. Very nice. All of this stuff for free. Now here's Just another one. Can can I upload other videos? Yeah, if I, you make if you make some yours videos, you can upload it. Yeah, like let's say I have my own videos. So David, do you yeah. know if Kaltura will close caption those videos? Yeah. If you upload so this your one own, I, sorry. Uh, yeah, this one I made with um, QuickTime. Oh, okay. Oh. Cool. So this wasn't this one wasn't made yeah. with Zoom. And you need I have other ones made with Zoom, but that David, one was made with QuickTime. David, can you yeah. show how do you upload video with Kaltura so Kaltura will add this text? Yeah, I think that's what Ben just showed. Do you want to do that one more time, Ben? Ben oh, showed I'll... how he downloaded it from the cloud, from Kaltura Cloud. He didn't show how he downloaded, you know, some other videos not from the cloud. No, you, mean you were just there, you can show. Do that, Ben, if you want to take over. Okay, so on Blackboard, right, when you go to Faculty Home and then My Media, <laughs> when you're here, you can just click Add New. Oh, okay. Oh. So you can okay. upload. You can actually do a screen capture through Kaltura. So if you don't want to use Zoom, Kaltura Capture will do the screen capture for you, mm -hmm. just like so in Zoom. So the difference between those two, just to point that out, you would do a Kaltura capture if you were not wanting others, if you're not broadcasting it out. Right. Zoom, right. you use it to broadcast it out and record it. Kaltura, if you're just there recording it yourself. Not live. So it's asynchronous. Right. Right. Oh, okay. I, I couldn't understand the so difference. Kaltura capture is not live. Right. It is like if I want to record it and then pre-record. Pre pre-record. Yeah, because the students can't then, w with Kaltura, they can't do what we're doing right now and um, go in and watch it live. Just pre-recorded. Pre